Um, if, we, if you're not noting the microphone, if you can just raise your hand, it doesn't help to just yell out they're not working. So we already know we have an issue. We're going to yell as loud as we can. We've asked them to turn them up. If they turn them up too loud, it creates feedback. But our position is we'd rather hear the feedback than uh, not, not hear us and not hear you. So, But again, if there's an issue, just raise your hand. We'll recognize you and we'll deal with it as best we can. So, On behalf of the town of Deerfield, I call this special town meeting to order. I've examined the, the voter sign-in and determined that a quorum is now present. I've also examined the return of the warrant and note that it is in order. Uh, there are a relatively few number of articles, but there is some uh, discussion to be had on many of them. Uh, and opinions certainly may differ on those articles. I just ask that we all do our best tonight to be respectful of each other. Whatever your position is, it, we're still part of a community, and that's, that's what we're trying to come out of here remembering at the end of the evening. Uh, so to accomplish that, I'd ask if you'd like to speak, if you would stand when you're called on to state your name, your street that you're living on. And at that point, we will recognize you. Any motions to amend will need to be in writing. There will be no exception to that this evening. Um, voters should all be located in the seats here. If you're a non-voter, I'd ask that you sit over there so that you're not counted as part of any formal vote. Um, as some of you know who have been here in the past, town meeting is run by uh, a publication called Town Meeting Time. And it can be somewhat difficult to follow, but it's the process that we've adopted and many towns have. So if there's a question or procedure or something that's happening, feel free to ask as well. My, jo my job here tonight is to make sure we do adhere by that, however, so we will be following those rules. In terms of what will happen tonight, the proponent of the motion will stand and make the motion. It will be seconded. The proponent will then give a brief summary of what that motion is about. And then at that point, the floor will be open to questions or comments. And those questions should be directed at the moderator. And then directed, uh, I will direct them to who should be answering at that point. So, um, we will be voting by a show of hands unless there are motions otherwise. So with that, I'd like to get the meeting started. And again, as many of you may know the individuals at the front table, I will have them introduce themselves again. I'm Dan Graves, the town moderator. Lisa Mead, town council. Carolyn Ness, select board member. Trevor McDaniel, chair of the select board. Dave Wolfram, select board member. Diana Schindler, I'm your acting town, uh, town administrator. Thank you, Diana. Um, I have two motions to start the evening. I move that the reading of all articles be waived and that prior to the reading of a motion under the article, the moderator briefly summarize the content of the article to be considered and further that unless objection is raised, the reading of detailed motions be waived or the article as printed on the handout can in the opinion of the moderator be incorporated by reference in any motion presented. Second. What we're basically asking in this motion is that the formal articles that were published or, or posted uh, gave you notice of the issue. Uh, so we will rely on that posting and then briefly summarize in the motions that come before you. So with that, any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. I move that the following people be allowed to address the audience during the town meeting. Attorney Lisa Mead, Brenda Hill, town accountant, Diana Schindler, Chris Curtis, MVP consultant, and Lori McComb, EMD. Uh, by our town bylaws, any individual who's not a voter or a resident of the town is not allowed to speak at town meeting. This motion will allow those individuals who may have relevant information to tonight's matters to speak before you. Any questions on that? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. On to Article 1, Mr. McDaniel. I move the town vote to authorize the select board to enter into a 10-year contract uh, with the option for a five-year extension commencing on July 1st, 2020 with a qualified vendor selected by Mass DEP through a competitive bid process for recycling processing services for the town, subject to the select board's determination that the contract is in the best interests of the town and subject to town meeting approval in the spring of 2020 for funding of these services. Mr. McDaniel, if you could summarize the motion briefly. Sure. This, um, this motion was brought to us by the, um, by the Franklin County Solid Waste District. They handle all the recycling at our transfer station along with many other towns in the community. They need to negotiate in Springfield is where all the recycling goes. They need to negotiate for a contract, and it's a 10-year contract. Normally, we only do, I think, three-year contracts or we ask for maybe five, but um, this is a longer-term contract because they have to negotiate on behalf of all of us. So this is giving us the authority to approve that and then bring, bring that to you um, in the spring town meeting for 
budgeting. The Finance Committee have an opinion on this matter, Mr. Olmstead? We, we recommend the, uh, the article, as we understood it, it is essentially what we've been doing in the past, except that we've extended it from, or it's been extended from five years to 10 years. Uh, and we felt that that was certainly a, a reasonable thing to do. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Aye. Opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Article two, Ms. Shores Ness. Move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $78,056 for the required cash match for the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Round 3 grant award received by the town. Second. Ms. Shores Ness? This is um, basically a replacement of the Mill Village culvert and the engineering for Kelleher Drive. There's $53,173 match for the culvert on Mill Village. And um, the engineering for Kelleher Drive is $10,874. The um, design work for the Green Streets infrastructure is $4,500. Um, it's it's the public education and climate re, uh, outreach on climate resiliency um, that we're going to do in kind as well as Lori um, McComb is going to be working on the evacuation plan with Great River Hydro and our emergency team as a match. Thank you. Mr. Olmstead, Finance Committee. As, as we understand it, the 78,000 represents approximately 25% of the total cost of the project. Um, That's correct. I think every one of you is driven across Mill Bills Road and that uh, culvert Again, our voices are fading a little, so we just can speak up loud. The back of the room is having difficulty, so we appreciate it. Are there any questions or comments on the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 3, Ms. Shores Ness. Move to pass over this article. This is for our round four grant award. It's um, the new uh, grant is probably going to be out in uh, two weeks, but we're having our meeting on Wednesday. We do not know what we're going to actually put in it yet. We're going to update our MVP plan by adding the South Deerfield um, sewer treatment plant tanks, but I'm not sure if we're actually going to um, put them in this round four because we need to match that up with our schedule um, you know, for renovation in the sewer treatment plant. So it might be too early. We have to spend the MVP money within a year of the award. And the problem is, this, you know, every, every few months there's a round. And we've been funded. We're one of a handful of communities in the entire state that's been funded so far every round. So I don't, I, I'm just worried we might actually get the t money for the tanks before we're ready for the tanks. So we, this, we're going to um, move over this for right now, and then we'll come back if we need the money. Because the maker has withdrawn the motion, there's no need for a second, we'll move on to Article uh, five, uh, 4. Mr. Wolfram. Okay. Move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $8,000 to be used at, as matching funds for the 2018 Emergency Management Preparedness Grant better known as the EMPG, received by the town to purchase electronic sign board to be used for announcements for general and emergency operations. Second. Uh, this is uh, this signage that will be in different areas of the town uh, wherever needed to make the public more aware of things that are going on within the town, whether it's an emergency situation or if it's just uh, general information such as making sure people who don't have internet or something know that there's special meetings going on and things like that to make it more visible. Uh, are there any questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion as presented. Opposed. The motion passes. Article 5, Mr. McDaniel. 
I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of 31000 to be added to the select board staff salaries account. Second. So the reason I'm asking for this. So um, Dan, you can speak up as best you can. I sure will. So uh, the reason I'm asking for this money to be put back into our account is that um, we've been having trouble staffing that account, uh, our offices. Um, it's been, ever since I've been here, it's been a hard time getting the, the correct staff uh, to run the to run the town. Um, it hasn't been recommended by the finance committee because they feel like we have enough money in this account right now to finish the end of the year. But my concern is that when we're going out to hire somebody, I want to be up front with the residents and say that we feel like this amount of money needs to be in our budget for our salaries for the full year. And I understand that if we could scrimp, you know, save, and depending on when we hire, we might wind up at the end of the year not needing the 31000 A lot like last year. We didn't need $31,000 that rolled back to free cash. What I'm asking for is I'm really hoping to get an assistant town administrator in there and support staff to deal with the changes in our town. We have so much going on. We're getting multiple grants. We're doing a lot of work. The town is getting much busier than it has been over the last few years, and we're still way underfunded for staff. So whether I spend all this money this year or not, um, and I don't have an exact plan of this amount of money exactly for this staff, but we are very short in our expressions office and very short in our office here, which is the following article. But we're having a hard time hiring the people. Um, when we go out to look for people, we don't have enough money, um, or they're asking for more money than we have been budgeting in the past. So I'm concerned that we would hire somebody and they would look at that, look at that line item. I just want to make sure we have enough money in the funds for a whole year to be upfront honest with the people to say, we think we're going to need 230 something thousand, 231,000 for the year. Um, and, uh, you know, to support the staff for, to run the town. And um, we may not need it by the end of the year, but I'm, you know, I only get one shot or two shots a year to come to you and ask you to support our department. And since we had uh, other articles coming up, I wanted to add this on there, um, and you'll see the next one I'll speak to is the same kind of thing where we may end up at the end of the year not needing it, but we want to be upfront and honest with you that every year we think that this is what's going to need to run the town for the staff and support the staff to run the town. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Sure. Finance Committee? Thank you, uh, Finance Committee didn't have a particular problem with the idea of staffing. What we had a problem with was the funding. Let me see if I can explain this fairly simply. The original budget for salaries in the selectman's office was $200,000. We are 25% through the year. In other words, give or take, you would anticipate that we would have spent 50000 and we would have 150,000 left. The total amount that we have left at the moment is 166,000. In other words, we're 25% through the year and they've spent less than 17% of the budget. At that current rate, they will end up with spending about 65 to 70% of the budget, have 30% left over not including the 31000 that they're asking to add. Our thought was, look, you do what you need to do, add the staff, run that past the Finance Committee, because that is our job to make a recommendation on it. And if we need to go back to town meeting, then we can do that. We have a town meeting coming up at the end of April. We are three months through the year. It's seven months between now and, and April. They're not going to add anyone to the staff for at least a month. So we're talking at most a half a year. We have plenty of time. We also have the town's reserve fund that we can look at if necessary. The money is in the budget. We don't need more. Why put more money in the budget if you don't need it? And the arguments that I'm making here in this one uh, will also, you know, you can use those same arguments, or we'll use the same arguments for the next article as well. Now, if anybody's got any questions? 
Bresky? Was this presented to the personnel committee? No, the personnel committee has not met this year. Yes. And here you. David Muhlenberg, who was the chief of if they want you 17 percent, is that because there are a number of positions that are not filled? And there's one. That's correct. There's one position that's not filled. And about what is that salary level? Or? I believe it's uh, right around. I think you were talking about seventy thousand dollars. So, in other words, there's seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars that hadn't been spent because there's been nobody in it, Mr. give or take. Mr. McDaniel, would you like to comment? Or? I would. Um, the reserve fund, I, I can't go to the reserve fund because that is typically used for an emergency and I'd like to keep it that way. It would be for unanticipated, something I wasn't aware of, we weren't sure, a bridge goes out, something like that, we need a transfer. This I'm perfectly aware that we are short staffed and um, again, I'm not saying we're gonna spend all the money just like last year when it turned back because I didn't have the ability to get the staff in there. We had just tonight uh, accepted the resignation of our assistant town administrator. We are really hoping to have that position filled and then add on the other support we're needed to get the work done in the town. It's been very difficult to hire somebody, very difficult you know, to find somebody to do the work and to run through all the different you know, times you've got to ask for money, times you can't ask for money. Um, I understand Skip and the Finance Committee's um, concern. I, I'm just asking and I want to be upfront, transparent, and tell you up front what I think we're going to need, and, um, and and I leave it up to you to trust the select board to do what we need to do to run the town. Um, if, if like every other year, if we don't use it, it, it will go back to you. We, we're not using the money for anything else. Mr. Upton. Yes, I uh, understand both issues here, both sides of the issue. I am on the finance committee, and the reason why I had trouble with with uh, recommending this article was that there's no job description. And there's money available in this year's budget to hire a person. But I just felt sitting on the finance committee, I would not be doing my job to simply say, hire somebody with no job description and not knowing a dollar amount. I just did not feel comfortable with that, especially when supposedly there's a, a ballpark figure out there and we do have the money in the budget for this year. And as Skip had mentioned, we do have an annual town meeting coming up in April. And I just felt if we were coming up short, we could address it at that point. I don't believe we'll be coming up short. But I do understand Trevor's point. So it's up to the voters here. Yes. I was the opposing vote for this, um, and I think that the, the funding is there, and the finance committee agrees that um, the finance committee voted to um, not recommend this article, but for me, the reason to oppose was fairly uh, seated on the fact that this position and the staff has been so hard to fill, and it's hard to uh, imagine applying for a job that's not fully funded. So for me, that was motivating and why I was the opposing voice. Yes. Um, Erica Ross, Reno Crossing Road. Um, I just wanted to say that I just was sworn in and someone else was also in the personnel committee, which yes. I know has been empty. And so I believe that is part of what you're referring to, that we don't have job positions because we haven't had people in the personnel committee. So I'm really excited to work together and make Right now, I feel strongly that I trust the select board. They're, they're out there looking for these people sort of without our support, which I'm really glad that I'm going to be able to give. And so at this point, I really feel strongly that I want to support what you're seeing in terms of having trouble hiring. And um, that extra money seems really reasonable to me. Thank you. In the back. Matt Russo, Pamela from Pride. Are we having trouble retaining people because the salary is not adequate for the work that's going on? Are we having trouble recruiting people because the salary is not adequate for what the job entails? Yes. Oh. Oh. 
Oh, yes. Both. Yes. Comments or questions? Well, uh, I'd like yes, just, Welcome. you know, town government is something that is very true and dear to me. Um, and I hate seeing it as dysfunctional as it is right at the moment. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening and probably it's because we're not getting the talent that we need in some of the positions. Uh, and, you know, Yes, we're asking for $31,000 right now, but we don't want to have to go back to another meeting later on to make sure that we have funding for somebody that we hire now. We want to make sure funding is in place. So they have a guarantee the next fiscal year they're going to have a job. You know, we can't afford to keep having these revolving positions within town because things just fall through the cracks. And when that happens, we get in trouble. Yes. I'm John Bresky from the Contract Firm. Have you had any applicants refuse to take a position because of the amount of wage? Yes. Yes. And just to address your point, from the assistant town administrator's position grade and step was determined, and there, this is an existing job that we're uh, filling, so it's been there for a number of years. Any other comments or questions? We'll call the motion. All those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. So this will be a little bit of a repeat. Article 6, Mr. McDaniel. So um, let's see. Article 6, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of 14000 to be added to the inspections department salary account. Second. So, very similar to the same. Um, we're looking to reorganize the position. Uh, we've had a, a retirement out of the inspections office um, where we have applications out or job description out, add out. We, we have some applications coming in, some interviews to start. And we're looking at re-engineering re that position. It was a, a part-time. You know, uh, we had one person in there that did two jobs for a long time, and then we had a helper uh, who, who worked um, and did a lot just in her short amount of time, but um, she's, she's retired. And we, we looked at um, moving that position to more of a, um, obviously helping the building inspector and all those inspectors, but also more land use, uh, working with our planning boards, our, our zoning boards, to handle a lot of the stuff that kind of walks down our hall and we're handling down here. We'd like a, a really um, competent person to be um, educated in, in land use um, to help help in the inspection stuff and also work with the land use boards, give them some relief and some support. Um, so that's, that's generally, you know, again, we have the same thing where if the stars align and we don't hire anybody for three months or two months, we may wind up with enough money in there. We looked at the two positions. We had funded a position. Um, you would all had funded a, a part-time position um, to, to fill in that department. We felt uh, with the retirement of the last person that's in there, we would combine the two salaries that are in there. That comes out to about 39,000. We looked at the job description, the, need, the needs that we feel might be needed in that position. It might be around 50 to 54, 52. Um, so that was the difference between the 39 and the, and the amount we were thinking of uh, 54. So that's why we asked for 14. Again, we'll probably get to the end of the year and we'll roll it back, but we just wanted to have it there in case we had a, a, a a candidate come in that we could that we could get behind and support. 
Thank you. It's my understanding the Finance Committee has already stated they did not vote in favor of this? The, our argument was the same on both of these. There, there's money in the current special department budget to cover everything the Trevor mentioned tonight for the rest of the year. Comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion as presented? Opposed? Motion carries. Article 7, Mr. Wolfram. Move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $7,500 to be added to the planning board account. Second. Mr. Wolfram. Um, this is uh, to supplement the planning board and also uh, give them the ability to hire a uh, professional planner to assist in some of the things that are going on in town. Um, that we used to have the funds there before and they were dropped. Um, and you know, as a board and some of the things that are happening within the town, we felt it was uh, important to augment the part-time board with some professional people and their opinions. Finance Committee? The Finance Committee recommends this article. Uh, the $7,500, it's really a matter of where the money's coming from. Up until over the last two or three years, there's been money in a revolving fund that the, that the planning board could use. That is kind of dropped down, and so they need the $7,500 back in, which is what they had four or five years ago. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 8. Ms. Shores Ness. Move the town vote pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 531, to establish a special fund for the celebration of the 350th anniversary of Deerfield's incorporation, a special celebration sponsored by the town for the benefit, enjoyment, and edification of its ed residents and visitors. Second. Second. Ms. Shores Ness. Um, we have a donation account that people can um, put their donations in. This account is specifically designed for the money that was voted from our um, town meeting in the spring, which we anticipate um, asking for $10,000 um, every year for the next three years. So there'll be a total of uh, $40,000 in that account. Our current budget, we are, are just estimating around 100,000, which we will fundraise the difference. But this would be a specific account for town money that is set aside from the town meeting vote in this every spring. Thank you. Question or just comment? For, just for clarification purposes, 4453I. Thank you. Yes. Oh, I'm now, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just in case people want to look it up when they yes. yeah. I'm sorry. I that. thought it was one. Okay. Thank you, John. Everybody's going to run. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Article 9, Ms. Shores Ness. Move the town vote to authorize the select board to purchase, acquire, or take by imminent domain and to raise and appropriate by borrowing the sum of $358,780 to fund said purchase or taking along as well as all other costs incidental and related to to, to acquire the parcel of land for the purchase of $357,280 said land identified as approximately 9.2755 acres, give or take. Plan Book 140, Plan 41, located off of Merrigan Way and owned by New England Natural Bakers by deed recorded in the Franklin uh, County Registry of Deeds, Book 7183, page 121. The acquisition of the said land having been determined to be necessary for the health and welfare of the inhabitants of Deerfield and to be used for the general municipal purposes or for resale to authorize the select board to in fact sell said property for economic development purposes 
as they deem appropriate to be under the care, custody, and control of the select board and to meet this appropriation to authorize the treasurer with the approval of the select board to borrow said sum under Mass General Laws Chapter 44 or any other uh, enabling authority and issue bonds or notes of the town upon such terms as the treasurer and the select board shall determine and that any premium received by the town upon the sale of any bonds or notes may be applied to the payment of the costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount of authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount. Ms. Shoresness? Um, this is for the purchase of the Oxford Pickle property back from New England Bakers for the same amount as we sold it to New England Bakers plus about $1,500 in closing costs. It's obviously important to control this property. It's the center of town. We would like to have uh, increase our tax base, provide good jobs, and have a good neighbor. We have the Dumont Corporation on one side of the Oxford Pickle property, our town garage, and so we want to purchase this back so that we can resell it. Thank you. Finance Committee? Finance Committee recommend this article. Initially, I'm not sure what the dollars were, but we purchased it for substantially more than the $357,000. And we certainly feel that it's worth that $357,000. In addition to that, we feel that it's really desirable for the town to control that property. So we strongly urge you, it does take a two-thirds vote, but we strongly urge you to support the uh, Selectman and the Finance Committee. Yes, sir. McDonald the North Hillside Road. What is the uh, the significance of the statement about taking by eminent domain, and how, if, if in any way, does that address the uh, financial aspect of it? Attorney Mead. So it's a, it's a general provision that we add uh, when we're taking property or getting property for sale in case there's a title problem that we can't clear. If we actually do the taking, it would clear the title problem. So it's general language. Uh, we have a, we're going to have a, there's a right of first refusal. That's why we're here tonight. So this will be done by a regular deed, likely not like by eminent domain, but it's just general language. Okay, so that doesn't affect, I mean, if that were to come to pass, it wouldn't, we would still have to purchase the land. Oh, no matter what, you'd have to pay the yeah. fair market value. Okay. Thank you. Any, yes. Our intention is our intention is to increase the tax base and have good paying jobs. We want jobs that would allow people to live in Deerfield and, and, and be able to have a family. So the idea is to look for a buyer that is would be an enhancement to the town. And you don't consider residential property uh, tax assessment? I mean <coughs> well it's it's economic there's a multiplier with uh, economic development whereas residential usually ends up costing the town some money. So in the long run it's important if we're going to control this property um, and we've had the expedited permitting um, district in that area so that we can facilitate a faster permitting process if we um, find the correct candidate. The, okay. does, the, does the voter, do the voters have a say in what that economic entity might be? Or do you folks make that decision? We ultimately make that decision. But obviously if we're negotiating with somebody then um, people have input. Mm -hmm. Always. We always listen to people. But we're looking for a good neighbor. And we're looking for somebody that would have offered good jobs. We don't want a company to come in and then move to China. Special process. And, and we have the permitting process that we go through. At which point we can make our statements. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Mr. Upton. Two things, I guess. One, I would uh, just wondering what the legal costs have been since we've been involved with this project as far as when we first sold it and now through the process of buying it back. Is there was some 
Mm. You don't want to add that. It, as far as water and so on and so forth. So I was just wondering what that total dollar amount was as far as legal expenses to mm. uh, every, every time we had an extension, what? Uh, well, so. It was a few dollars, right? Um, so right now, so since um, two years ago, three years ago, our firm has been on a flat fee with the town. So the legal costs associated with this take with, with this purchase are the registry costs and the title costs, not our regular legal costs. Those are all part of the regular flat fee that we pay that the town pays us uh, monthly. Um, when the when the town first purchased it, it was um, my a different firm, and that was in uh, um, early 2000. So I don't know what it would have been our title uh, costs at the time. There were zoning issues that we did and rezoning that was done. So I, I don't know what those costs were. Uh, the, when we, when the town purchased, uh, sold it to New England Natural Bakers, uh, there were a number of extensions that were a part of it. Um, mm -hmm. But then there was some cleaning up of the title that had to be done in order to contemplate or um, to finish that actual sale. So I, I don't have that number off the top of my head. I, I can't tell you what that well, is. Could you give me an estimate? I, I can't even. Too I can't much. even guess what what it was. I can't. I, I mean, I can't. I, don't, I just wouldn't be fair. But those are funds that we'll look at trying to recap when we resell it. When we, when we go to resell it, Jeff, well, certainly we're going to get more than 35000 an acre. We sold the Dumont property for about $100,000 an acre. Yeah, no, I, so I understand. This I is, saw this. If you remember correctly, I was very upset when we were selling it for thirty-four, dollars $35,000 So acre. you're not upset that we're when buying we, it back for the same amount? dollars an acre. The other, the other thing that I'm a little curious about is the statement has been thrown out several times, and not not arguing for one or the other, but uh, every time residential is mentioned, it's kind of the public is led to believe that it's not uh, or it's costly to the town, and I understand that if you're putting kids into a school system. That's but what we really were talking about. Could you please explain to me how it costs the town for over 55 community with no kids going to the school? It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. Okay. Education is, so, uh, Jeff, so as a member of the finance committee, Jeff, as a member of the finance committee, can the select board finish what they're saying? I believe Mr. Upton was being interrupted, but I think they both should be speaking. So if you can Sorry. finish your point, Ms. Shores, you can have full. Carolyn, I'll let you go. Nope, Ms. Shores, please. I just wanted to let you know that 70% of our budget, just about, is school related, as you know, Jeff. Right. So residential has that cost. If it's over 55, that's a different situation. Right. And we are certainly very open to senior housing, but it's not appropriate in it. ED, EPD district, an expedited permitting district, when you have tractor trailer trucks and snow plows and right. no, highway I, I garages just, just and, and, now, elder, and elderly I would just, I would just drivers. I appreciate it in the future if we were a little more careful on our terminology and expenses, that's all. Thank you. Mr. Russo. I may be dating myself. I probably am, but I don't care. Uh, Gordon Oates, years ago, Gordon was on the Finance Committee, made a phenomenal presentation. I wasn't a big fan of Gordon. He did a great presentation at town meeting explaining for every tax dollar that we collect, a business cost to town at Deerfield, and I don't remember the exact numbers. 35 percent. 35 cents of the dollar. All right, so 35 cents of the dollar. So it costs us 65 cents of that dollar we collect, 35 cents is left over. Every dollar residential we collect, it costs the town of like a dollar seventeen or a dollar eighteen to provide services. Yes. So maybe it's time for the finance committee to update a presentation like that for us all at town meeting to help us understand the difference between business and residential, and maybe throw in a fifty-five home for community and how that would impact. So we all have an idea, a level set on the tax base and the cost of services because we know services have changed. Ambulance used to be free back then, and only saved for today, and we're paying market sewer today, and we did the past. So 
It may be worth it to break that up. And let me say maybe it rests some of those big nonprofits at the other end of town who said, well, they don't pay their fair share for that. You know, just confirming with council, it's important to note that that district is not zoned for residential, so it would require a special permit uh, at the outset before anything could even be done residential, regardless of where you fall on the issue. So I think that is relevant and important. So, Mr. Hilchey. Tim Hilchey, 330 Road. So just to clarify for people in attendance, if I'm understanding correctly, the town sold to Dumont acres at $100,000 an acre. And assuming that a deal like that is available for the town if we in fact repurchase, that means that $65,000 per acre would be coming back to the town. And if we don't buy the land back, that, that they would make New England it. Natural Bakers has the opportunity to make a $65,000 acre profit. And this is a company that made a deal with the town and then reneged on that deal. And I would ask, uh, if I could ask Lisa Mead to let us know, in future, would it be possible to do a contingent sale that says that we will sell you the land for X amount of dollars, but the sale doesn't take place until you actually break ground and start to build? So as you can imagine, there were many negotiations that included this repurchase, um, and the timing of it related to the um, financing that they were going to get to build their building. So that was actually part of the negotiations at one time. When would the town have the opportunity to purchase back if they didn't start constructing? Um, those negotiations went all over the place and resulted in this um, ability to repurchase the property at the price they purchased it at. So the select board was very on top of that, um, but it was a negotiation process, and this is where it ended up. Mr. Decker. If you could speak up as loud, loud as you can. Just I believe the original parcel was sold for a million five. I could be wrong, but I think it was originally about a million five. 1.8. Was it 1.8? Yeah. I stand corrected. Uh, what I would like to do is talk about the fact that this article, I agree with buying the property back, but I'm cautious about letting the selectmen just turn around at any given meeting putting it on the agenda and selling it that night or agreeing to sell it. I think it ought to come back to town meeting where these people that are here tonight can have a say in whether they like the deal or they don't like the deal. And I would like to offer a motion to strike after resale uh, the words and to authorize the selectmen to in fact sell said property. Okay? And um, council has marked out the language. The reason for it is I think it ought to come back to town meeting and not get just done. And uh, it's up to the people here. They want to uh, strike that. That's fine. If they don't. But for heaven's sakes, we don't want to buy it because it's uh, really what we we need to own it. At this okay. point, there's a motion to amend, so we have to take a second on that and then discuss it. So is there a mo uh, second? Second. Second. Ms. Shores and S. Um, what I'd like to say is the reason why it's attractive for us as a select board to be the permitting authority and to control this. Yeah. Oh, the reason why it's attractive for the select board to control this parcel and to negotiate is because you can do this in a relatively speedy manner. And that was the point of having the economic permitting or expedited uh, permitting district. And the reason why is, is that's one of the reasons we have the Dumont Co Corporation right now. It, it, within a year, they purchased the property and they were open to business. And we would not have been able to have them in town and have their uh, building, brand new lovely building, and, and their taxes um, without having the ability to fast track it. And I realize that, again, you're trusting us as a select board, but we truly feel that it is necessary to be able to 
negotiate. And we would certainly not negotiate with the best interests of town at heart. Um, I always look at this as if it was my neighborhood and my neighbor. And that's why um, I feel it's important that we have the ability to do this. We really do have the best interests of the town at heart and we are certainly not going to make a decision that is negative to um, our downtown. Just before entertaining other comments, does everyone understand that right now there's a motion to amend and we can run through the article again if, if anyone has questions on what's being asked to be amended or is everyone okay? So we'll continue the discussion. Sir. Yeah, can you just read the amended yes. passage, please? So it's Article 9, if you have your uh, motions in front of you. And I'll, I'll start from the top for coherency, but I'll tell you when we get to the point that the motion is to amend. Move the town vote to authorize the select board to purchase, acquire, or take by eminent domain and to raise and appropriate by borrowing the sum of $358,780 to fund said purchase or taking along with along as well as all other costs incidental and related thereto to acquire the parcel of land for a price of $357,280. Said land identified as approximately 9.2755 acres more or less. Plan book 140 page, uh, plan book 140 plan 41. Located off American Way and owned by the New England Natural Bakers by deed recorded in the Franklin County Registry of Deeds, book 7183, page 121. The acquisition of said land having been determined to be necessary for the health and welfare of the inhabitants of Deerfield and to be used for general municipal purposes or for resale. At that point, the motion is to strike the words and to authorize the select board to in fact sell said property. That's the end of the strikeout. And then the motion continues as it reads. Mr. McDaniel. I think it's important to uh, allow the select board to negotiate it. Uh, it would be very difficult to negotiate a, a real estate sale with every member of town. You, you elect the select board <laughs> to manage this business for you, and um, you know, you'll know you have the opportunity in the spring to get another select board member. Um, but I, but I, think, um, I think you should trust the select board to negotiate on your best behalf. And personally, my opinion is that we need economic development in the town, and I was so thrilled to go last Monday night to 35 new jobs and all brand new machines in there and then coming to Leo's table and all the different places in town to, to get lunch and uh, it was just very infectious to see his enthusiasm for the jobs that he's bringing to town and I'd like to duplicate that on a larger scale there. So that's, my, that's my goal. Mr. Dyer. Mr. Moderator, when I'm not taking away the selectman's authority to negotiate and bring back a purchase and sale agreement and to do their, their fast permitting and all that stuff, but bring the, bring the deal back to the town meeting and let it get blessed. Because the way it stands now, they can post a meeting on Friday, right? They can hold a meeting on Wednesday night and they can sell it. Well, and there's no, there's no uh, feedback to it. They can agree to sell it and it's all over with. I think it needs to come back to town meeting. That's all. I'm not trying to stop the permitting authority or anything else. I just think it needs to come back to town meeting. If they want to agree to bring it back, that's fine. We, I can withdraw my motion if that's what they, they'll agree to it. But I want to make sure that we've got a check and a balance. That's all. Council has just asked to address the town So um, when the board of selectmen or the select board go to sell this property, they have to issue an RFP. They can't do it overnight they can't just pick somebody and then decide to sell it to them so um, I just want to be clear about that that's an RFP it has to be posted on the state uh, website the central register it has to be advertised in the newspaper um, so just to be clear that there is a process it's a very public process required under the law in order to sell the property Mr. Pareski uh, two questions on that RFP uh, to if we read it we don't like it do we have any power to override it no. or turn it down nope. if we don't like the language of it? Uh, so Otherwise, I, the notice to us is really meaningless. Mm -hmm. So the, the process for the select board in the past is they've developed an RFP and it has criteria, then they discuss it. They've actually then sent it back for a revision. So those meetings are all public meetings. I, I can't speak to the select board, but... Um, I've not given them an RFP yet that they've approved in one meeting. So um, that's, it is, it is a process that they go through about what the criteria are 
um, that are necessary for an, uh, a potential proposal to be selected. I understand that, but what power do the vote, power for lack of a better word, do the voters have if they don't like the language in the RFP? You, you would have to come to the select board meeting and have that discussion with the select board. But it's still their vote. Yes, sir. So then we have no power over how it's sold. You have which, persuasion. Which leads me into the next thing. It was, it's, it's being bought back at approximately 35000 an acre. And based on the Dumont sales price, it's worth 100000 an acre. So if you really, if the objective is to get jobs, Sell it for thirty-five thousand an acre, you'll get jobs. So where between the thirty-five thousand and the hundred thousand are you gonna what are you gonna sell it for to get the jobs? Do you have any amount in mind? I would love a hundred. I mean that's what we did last yeah, time. Yeah, but if it's, it's sure if it's seventy-five, we'd look at that. But I mean we, we don't have the offer on the table yet. And, and it depends on what kind of jobs they're bringing. But Mr. Alton. <clears throat> Yeah, just very quickly, two things. Uh, one, I believe it came through the annual town meeting when we purchased it. So I believe with Bob Decker that it probably should come through a town meeting, whether it be special town meeting, annual town meeting, or whatever, to let the public have a say. The other thing uh, that I'm aware of dealing with several committees is this committee may not exist when we finally sell this land again. Committees, the makeup of committees changes all the time. So, and I, with all due respect to the committee, I have no doubt of good intentions, but you may not have the same people sitting here in front of us when we go to sell that property. Still have a question or comment? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so committee, meaning not the select board, you mean the planning committee? They're not a committee. No, okay. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, I feel like we, I've never been a part of a community where the town gets to negotiate or vote like the way that people are talking about on buying and selling land. What I do understand is that we vote for our representatives and our representatives then represent us. And so I know not everyone's happy with our representation. I know that feeling well in this in my life, not in this town. But I do feel like that's where our vote is. That's where our voice is. And we did vote for this. This select board has been voted in by the town of Deerfield. And I think that the RFP process, and my experience with this select board, has been that there are meetings. There are very active meetings. There are very contentious meetings at times. People's voices are heard. And people get online, and people get go down to the dump and talk about what they want or don't want. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of active engagement in this town and that we will continue to have that, but ultimately we can't all be talking to realtors. I mean, that is sort of the thing that we vote for you to do that for us. And I think the previous things that we voted on, getting more better staff in town is gonna help this process. So we've already kind of got that in place. So I appreciate the work you're doing and I appreciate that we can disagree and that's okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Ms. Walton. Um, well, I was on the board when we actually sold that property to them. Uh, those of you who remember, we actually had a couple public meetings with them here for presentations before we did any movement on anything. We tried to, you know, we weren't doing this in a vacuum. And obviously, selling that property for what we sold it for, it, in our opinion at the time, this is what the town wanted. And so that's why we did it. It wasn't, you know, just because we wanted to move the property and get it off the books. Yes. We would wait south of the road. I have a question. In the process, does uh, whatever company who comes forward, do they have to go through the planning board as well? So, no, they do not. No. All the right. okay, so it's just the <laughs> um, The reason why we set up the expedited permitting district is it was zoning that um, Lisa's firm, uh, well, before Lisa's firm, but it was Lisa's, she was part of that firm, was to set it up so we could um, not go through the planning board. We were not trying to bypass the planning board 
it process, it was the select board became the planning board process so that you could go in a speedier manner because there's three versus a whole board. And the, the idea was to have economic stress on economics. So are they, are they still required to adhere to all of our yes. uh, requirements? It's just that what you've done is expedite the zoning board. And do you typically have members of the zoning board or the zoning board of appeals participating in those as well? We, we solicit comments. And we obviously, we're taking input from you know, the neighbors and neighborhood and what concerns. I mean, we have light, you know, we talk about lighting. We do all the same things that the planning board would do. What's the traffic load? What kind of, um, you know, right, all this kind of stuff. Okay, it, it isn't, it's just that it's a different process and the fact that we can make decisions a little bit more speedy. We meet on a more regular basis. We can meet, um, you know, right after one another kind of thing versus, you know, a month, every monthly meeting. Attorney Meehan, do you want to add to that? Or? Uh, the expedited permitting um, law was passed in, during the middle of the downturn in order to do exactly what uh, the select board member said, was to allow uh, one body uh, help expedite permitting to help encourage economic development, and that's exactly what they've done. Yes. Uh, you said that the, first of all, can you explain what RFP means mm -hmm. and what the process is? You said that's the only way that the voters can maybe put their input? That would be a request for proposal. Mr. McDaniel, would you like to yeah, stand briefly on it? It would be a request for proposal. So anytime the town does something, they would, they would typically request for proposal. So companies could then propose bids on the property or propose to do you know, anything for the town. All kinds of things go out for request for <coughs> proposal or request for price or and these request are for open public meetings? Yes. Everything is public. Everything's <coughs> open and public, yeah. Thank Mr. Helchi. Go ahead, Mr. Helchi. Well, I was just going to move the question on the amendment. Oh, if we can let one more question. Sure. Yeah, I appreciate it. I yes. I apologize. There. Thank you. Um, Ava Gibbs on River Road. I just heard Carolyn say that the Dumont thing um, had to go. It went quickly. I think that's what you said. So I think this is a case of uh, it sounds to me that we can trust the select board. I don't know what all this distrust is. And there's plenty of checks and balances about what we just heard. And the fact that we had one company that we had to work quickly with them, um, this can happen. This is what happens with businesses. So if we had to bring everything to a town meeting and now this special town meeting, we would be completely constipated as a, <laughs> as a town. <laughs> can you tell she's from Brooklyn originally? <laughs> so now I well. <laughs> Give me one more. Ms. Petrarch. I'm Sharon Petrarch. I have a quick question because it's been out there for a long, long time. Why did the town sell that property initially so reasonable per acre? And this is the concern of some of the seniors out there now because they're having a hard enough time paying their taxes now. So they're worried about who's going to buy it. We all are sooner or later and the cost of the land, who makes that decision? Ms. McDaniel. I would take a, I was not here on the board at that time, but I would take a stab that it was, it was an economic downturn and, and there was not a lot of opportunity at the time where it's a little bit different now. Um, I think we, you know, luckily we're still in a good run for um, the economy and businesses are still buying and, and producing, but I, I believe at the time it was kind of, there weren't a lot of choices and the, and it was to create some jobs and, and get things moving. But um, so, and that's why I kind of think it's such a great idea to buy it back. I mean, not that we'd want, who wants to buy that kind of amount of property, but at least we have um, the ability to, to, to make a profit maybe. Not that we'd ever break even on what we spent for the property, but um, it would, we'd be in a better position now, I think, with this economy to get a higher price and maybe more selective, more and jobs it, in the area. And move it faster. And move it faster, so. Ms. Shores, Ness, did you have anything to add to I, I, question? I just, Sharon, as you know, um, we had the potential for um, 164 housing units there. And, um, you know, we just felt it was important to control the um, property. And, and we bought the property high. Everyone knew that because the economy crashed within a year and, or within a few months. And there was nothing, 
you know, we could do about it. And Natural Bakers was a good company for us. You know, they were local, they had growth potential, and um, the, we just felt that there was going to be um, uh, good opportunities for them to be here. And um, we had it discussed, we've had, you know, multiple meetings on that. And we gave them opportunity after opportunity, but they've had multiple changes in management and the manager they have now um, between the gas moratorium and um, opportunities in Greenfield, they decided to stay in Greenfield. Mr. Hilchey. <laughs> I moved the question. The question has been moved. At this point, there's no, no further Mr. debate. Mr. Moderator. There's been a, a motion to move, Mr. Decker. I realize that, but I have a motion on the floor and I am entitled to a close if you check your book. Yeah, I think we're going to do that, right? That's the motion we're voting on, right? I, I don't believe there is, Mr. Decker. We can take a moment and check that. Wow. You're going to vote on the amendment for. Right now, there's a motion to move the question. That would be the only thing we're talking about with a closing on. You still would have a right to, to speak. If, just give us a moment. Oh. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I think I've read it at some it's, point. It's not a legal question. It's all what town, town meeting time says. Either town council or I find that, Mr. Decker. So at this point, we're going to rule that out of order. There's a motion to uh, to call the question. That would require a two-thirds vote. All we're doing at this point is is calling the question. So all those in favor? I'm sorry. I, I apologize. That was I wasn't being clear. So at this point, the motion to amend is before the the town. Is it the motion to amend? Or are we voting to stop debate? You are stopping debate on the amendment. Okay. And I apologize for not being clear. <laughs> All we're doing at this point is voting to stop debate on the question. On the amendment. On, on the, the amendment. amendment. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? People want to go home. The motion passes. Okay. At this point, we're on to the motion to amend. No. Yes. yes. We did not. No. We did not. You're right. He's right. Motion to amend. At this point, the motion to amend as presented is before you. It has been called to question. There is no more debate. We find nothing to support a closing statement. So all those in favor of the motion to amend. That requires a simple majority, which does not pass. So the motion to amend has not passed. So we're back to the underlying Article 9 motion. Are there any further comments or questions on the motion as presented by Ms. Shores Ness? All those in favor of that motion, and that requires the two thirds majority. Those opposed? That motion carries by two thirds. And with that, and, and none too soon, I would move to dissolve. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. The meeting is dissolved. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you everybody.